Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez tells critics of the martial law declaration in Mindanao to stop commenting if they are not from the region. Anyway, 60 days naman yan eh. Maiksi lang yung panahon na yan, 60 days. Eh ano pang, uh, ang dami lang kiyaw-kiyaw kasi eh. Karamihan nagre-reklamo, hindi naman din tiga Mindanao. He says Mindanaoans understand the need for martial law through first-hand experience, unlike critics from Luzon or the Visayas. Alam nyo kasi, pag tiga doon ka, makifeel mo na kailangan talaga. At tama yung ginawa ng presidente. Pagka hindi ka naman tiga doon, tiga rito ka o kung tiga saan ka, eh may kitumahimik ka na lang muna. The 1987 Constitution allows the President to declare martial law for 60 days, but any extension requires the approval of Congress in a joint session. The Supreme Court may also review a martial law declaration following an appropriate proceeding filed by any citizen. But House Majority Leader Rodolfo Farina says Congress does not need to concur with the declaration and only needs to convene when revoking or extending martial law. Opposition lawmakers earlier called for a joint session and slammed Duterte for his, quote, creeping authoritarianism. Malacanang thanks 15 senators who support President Rodrigo Duterte's declaration of martial law in Mindanao. A Senate resolution filed on Monday expressed the support of 15 out of 23 senators for martial law. But 12 out of 23 senators earlier said they favor a joint congressional session to deliberate Duterte's martial law declaration. Presidential spokesman Ernesto Abella declines to comment on the need to convene Congress in a joint session to discuss the martial law proclamation. Abella says the effectiveness of martial law implementation will depend on the support of all branches of government and the public. He says, quote, The executive branch cannot do it alone and we need the cooperation of the entire government and the support of the people to finally flush out these forces to restore normalcy and bring peace to the island of Mindanao. But minority senators say Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana admitted security officials did not recommend a declaration of martial law in Mindanao to Duterte. The senators say the security officials made the admission during a special briefing for senators on Monday. Senate Minority Leader Frank Gerlon also says Lorenzana told senators that the military could end the problem with the Maute group even without the martial law proclamation. Philippine National Police Chief Ronald De La Rosa on Tuesday confirms an armored personnel carrier, or APC, belonging to the Special Action Force was left behind during a battle between SAF forces and terrorists. De La Rosa says the APC got hit by a landmine and was left behind because the crew got injured. He says the APC is an object of recovery as troops continue clearing operations in Marawi City. The APC had weapons on board. De La Rosa says the SAF troopers from the APC are alive and are being treated in nearby Iligan City. News of the lost combat vehicle first spread after a picture of apparent Maute or Abu Sayyaf fighters standing on top of it went viral. The Social Welfare Department on Tuesday says the number of people displaced by the armed conflict in Marawi City has climbed to at least 71,000. As of 6 a.m. Tuesday, around 10,809 people or 2,261 families were staying in 20 evacuation centers. Of the total displaced, around 60,000 are staying outside evacuation centers or with their relatives or friends, mostly in Iligan City, Cagayan de Oro City, and Marawi City. The clashes in Marawi started with a military raid on May 23 in Barangay Basak Malutlut. Clashes erupted between soldiers and terrorists from the Maute group, driving away most of the city's residents. The violence prompted President Rodrigo Duterte to declare martial law in the entire Mindanao to quell what he said was a fast-growing terror threat linked to ISIS. Panama's former dictator Manuel Antonio Noriega dies Monday at 83. He was in a hospital recovering from a brain tumor operation. The ex-strongman was granted temporary release last January to undergo the medical procedure. Noriega took power in Panama in 1983 and was ousted by United States forces in 1989. He was physically diminished after decades of imprisonment for murder and forced disappearances during his dictatorship. <laughs>